five pounds is a lot more than you think. Well, yeah, but true. I think they we said that... A few videos back, we sent out my brand new Dart 388 and No Time 98mm Turbo in exchange for this dry decked aluminum rotted coyote motor. We'll talk soon about what exactly we're doing with this motor and what we'll be doing with the motor that it will be getting replaced by. The turbo kit came back from powder and it's time to start assembling everything so we can fire this thing up and try to get to the track as soon as possible. Follow this line right here. Yeah. Yeah, that would look a lot better. It's like on top of it. Oh, yeah. Because it's not oh, bolted down. It goes on top of it. Maybe better off. Hold on, y'all pulling on something over there. There's two out of all right here. You don't have to really. This doesn't get hot. This, this, this could touch. This, hot. It could, this is what needs to have the. Well, the issue you're gonna have is you're not gonna put a filter, so that doesn't fucking matter. And now this stays all. We we have a damn. It just barely cleared that. Okay, so we'll go like. Well, put it where it's supposed to go, because this this bolt's not lined up. rubber here on all three corners so so it doesn't rotate could be wrong but, but what I do see well no it can't it can't come apart I would uh, this way and then this fitting here is gonna go it's gonna tee into this Once the kit was installed, we began routing all the vacuum lines and triple checking how we are routing wastegate lines to ensure we don't make any expensive mistakes. I've used several VS Racing products, but this is the first time I've used their Gen 3 50mm wastegates, which are a piston style wastegate over the common diaphragm style. After the initial startup, we noticed one of the fittings on the return line was leaking due to an incorrect o-ring. So off to Harbor Freight we go to pick up an o-ring kit. That's broken. We need to fix that one. I don't know. Alright guys, so it's like 8 in the morning. I couldn't sleep last night. We we're having like some weird uh, miss. Just didn't sound right at all. Um, 
couldn't figure out what it was. And actually we had this same problem a while back with these same coils with the same coil extension harness and we just couldn't figure it out. We ended up putting our buddy Josh's coils with coil harness and everything and it worked. That's when it did the wheelie. So it was bugging me all night last night and I decided to dig into the coal harness and see what was going on and I think I fixed it. We're about to start it up and see, but here we go. So on the harness side, this is up from the Holly diagram. Cylinder two, pin B, green. Well, right off the bat, cylinder two, this is the coal plug side. So cylinder two, pin B is green. Cylinder two should be orange. Well, I know these are labeled right, but I think they're pinned wrong. Cylinder two is orange. That's not, that's not right. Cylinder two should be green. And just so happens it's the same. So cylinder four, pin C is orange. Cylinder four, my pin is blue. Cylinder six, pin F, blue. My cylinder six is green. Turns out all three of these cylinders are very low on temperature. So they're the ones that are acting up. Cylinder eight is perfect. Well, I can see that. Pink and pink is correct. So I believe there's no way that we messed up because if you see this coal harness, you cannot flip these even if you wanted to. It's impossible. There, look, look at it. There's no way. So I believe, which I've looked it up and apparently this happens is holly pins it wrong whatever it may be but there's no way that we could get these wrong they're labeled so we put them on thought it was right and it's not so what i did real quick i just moved the wires real quick so now i have number four wire is at number two and then i have number six wire at number four and i have number two wire at number six and then eight is good so this should be correct i'll test it right now i mean i it had a really bad miss like you could i knew something was wrong so if this is good then we'll probably just repin we'll swap we'll change the pins over here and then we'll put these back the way they should be but i think it should fix the problem i hope so there's really nothing else i checked the other side the other side's good all the pins match up everything matches so i'm not sure what happened there but Let's find out. After fixing all of the exhaust leaks, leaky return line fittings, and getting the car back on eight cylinders, we took the car out to test everything on low boost to make sure the car was mechanically sound so we can get it on the dyno and get the tune trained out before we hit the track. I know a lot of people don't do this, but we always try to make sure the car is 100% ready to go and diagnose any issues beforehand so the tuner can do his job effortlessly without having to fix issues that we could have figured out ourselves before wasting his time and ours.
10 pounds on the dome. It might make more than that. I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I thought it had like fucking at least 20 and then from there. I think, I think go now. I noticed right away how much RPM the converter was dropping on the shift, but I just assumed that was due to it not having much power on only 10 PSI. This may sound irrelevant right now, but it will make more sense in the next video. I didn't. I mean, it went perfect. You just gotta take them both off because you have to push it back in. We've never had that problem, so maybe I just didn't push it hard enough. 